Good morning. Good morning. It's Monday and uh, it's episode 111. So prophetic people, what do you make of that lovely number? All things are new. I don't know, but welcome to you from all over the world. Some people from Australia, Scotland, Spain, Pittsburgh. My goodness. Uh, Surely some people from Britain in here somewhere, the British Isles, I should say. Inverness, oh, that's Scotland. I'm looking through. Sorry, there you go. Damp Dorset, that's where I am too. And I'm joined this morning by the effervescent Louise Reed. (laughs) She's just bubbling away like a glass of sparkling water. And, And now I'm trying to think of a suitably, the bombastic. Sarah Jane. How about that? Good morning, Gadel and Louise. Good morning. I just unearthed my thesaurus this morning. Uh, (laughs) Good morning to you all. Uh, This is going to be a deep, profound morning with you for the next 25 minutes or so. Uh, We've just been having a little catch up in in the green room virtual green room and uh, these ladies are carrying some seriously timely and important words so we're going to dive straight in and I'm going to come to Sarah Jane to kick us off what is the Lord saying to you for us today well good morning everyone it's great to be with you on this Monday from Scotland and I really felt the Lord was speaking to us a question He was asking us a question that we were to ask him back. He was saying, what time is it, my people? What time is it? And so this is a question that we ask God back to him. And we say, God, what time is it? Explain to me, explain to us what time we are in. And we know from Ecclesiastes 3, 1, that God has specific times for specific things. It's very clear that God sets the times and seasons. And we also know from Acts 17, which I think is a really key scripture for now. And if you haven't got yourself into Acts 17, I encourage you to have a look at it afresh because Paul is here with the Greeks and the Greeks had this understanding of time being two things. One, chronos time, which was a linear time. Two, which was the kairos time, which was almost like opportune moment, the opportune moment. And he goes to their place of discussion, the air pagus, aeropagus, if I'm saying that right, forgive my Greek, it's not the best in Monday morning, aeropagus. And he goes there and he challenges them and he says, hey, do you know what? This unknown God that you're talking about, I'm going to explain to you who that God is. And by the way, in verse 26, and I'm just going to read it to us now, it says, from one man, he made every nation of men that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he determined the times. He determined the times set for them and the exact places where they should live. God did this so that men would seek him because it's all about seeking God. It's all about knowing God. Everything that he sets in the season uh, and out of it, it's all about seeking him. And it's all about that love story of Song of Songs. He's here, he's gone, let's go seek for him. It's all about that. So getting to know God in the set times and the seasons. And what I saw, and uh, Adele and Louise, we were chatting about this earlier. What I saw yesterday as I was praying were these angels with timepieces around their necks. And they were laying hands on me and getting ready to lay hands on others of us to set our time clocks with the time clocks of God. And this sense of the individuals that know God setting our times, but also setting the times of nations. Uh, because I saw this giant timepiece over the whole earth. And it was two minutes to 12, that sense of two minutes to the hour, two minutes to the hour of God's government is how I would see it in the spirit. But two minutes to uh, an awakening, if you will, two minutes to that awakening of love. And so that sense of God moving and saying to us, people of God, understand what time it is. Be like 
Issachar, the tribe of Israel. In First Chronicles, we hear about Is Issachar, the tribe that understood the times and seasons of God, the set times and seasons of God, and knew what to do. So he's saying to us, what time is it? And I think there's lots of things we could we could prophesy into the time that it is now. Um, but um, Adele, you might want to unpack that a bit more but I think I would encourage us all to say God what time is it for me right now what is my personal time come and reset if you will my personal time clock so that I'm walking with you so that I'm constantly with you the image that I had because I'm a seer I always have these images the images that I had was like God with his shadow and we were doing that game that you used to do as a child where you would jump onto people's shadows and try and get on their shadow. And it was like God saying, get in my shadow because it's time to walk with me and not lag behind and not run ahead. It was very much get into my shadow time. So yeah. good, so profound. That's a lot of people in the comments saying, yes, what a great question to ask. And obviously go away and you know ask that personally sit sit with god and ask him what the time is for you and i love that shadow image because you have to be close to someone you know to jump mm -hmm. in the shadow you have to be right up and have god overshadowing us and and i heard the other day god was saying about how he's taking us from overwhelm to overshadow you know that he is going to overshadow mm -hmm. us with that resurrection life that is going to release not just a, something that's been you know, sort of remade, rehashed, but something new. So Louise, talk yeah. to us about time and twilight and what you're seeing and hearing. Oh, time. Well, just uh, as SJ has been talking there, I just feel so, oh my goodness, enlarged, but also thrilled. Um, and I guess one of my comments would be is that I don't think I have known a time ever in my lifetime where I'm feeling the sovereignty of God like ever before. There's such a weight of his, of his sovereignty, of him really having time in his hands and us really not being in a position to take any initiative on mm. his behalf, but rather, just as you have said, finding ourselves in his shadow, get in my shadow, as, as SJ said. And um, just that whole thing about uh, a couple of comments on the times and seasons. Uh, uh, we, we, you know, tend to talk about the men of Issachar like as if they're some specialized group. I think that we need to see an increase in the men of Issachar in our, in our day who are really understanding the times and seasons. And in understanding times and seasons, um, there is our personal uh, time and season and also our, our corporate, whether it's families, businesses, churches, entities or whatever, and of course, nations and, and globally. And the, I mean, the big thing in that is keeping in time and on time, which we often say is an expression with the Lord and keeping in step with the spirit now that sounds like a really great thing um and oh yes let's keep in, in step with the spirit but we need to understand for ourselves how we do that and what that looks like because i i'm gonna say i think more than ever there is a danger danger zone oh, alarm bells if we come out of the shadow of his wings and his thoughts. You know, there's there's it's it's like we've said before that this COVID season is a is a, a another threshing floor. And one of the issues about um threshing floors, and I'm thinking of, I think it's the threshing floor of Nacon. Is it Nacon? Um, but where the ark was coming down, and um, you know, it was where they were doing it any old how. And, you know, David didn't take thought to what he was doing, bringing the ark into, into Jerusalem. They hadn't read the law. They hadn't caught up on how it was. And they were just basically copying the Philistines. Mm -hmm. And what the Philistines got away with, the people of God could not get, get away with. And why I'm saying that is that there comes a, there, there comes a point where our own way of doing things and dare I say our own version of order and what is right with God. There mm. comes a time where God says, actually, at this point, no, I am turning the chaos and I am bringing my order. 
And I feel that there's a real strength on in, in relation to time here. His sovereignty, he has things in his hands and he's saying to his people, no more doing it your own way. What you, mm -hmm. what, dare I say, what we got away with in the past, mm -hmm. you are not going to get away with in the now and going into the future. And we've got to remember as well that, um, you know, it talks in, in Daniel 7 about, uh, you know, uh, the enemy wants to change the set times. I mean, the absolute opposite of what it says in, in Acts 17. The enemy yeah. wants to change the set times and the laws. The, the enemy is going to, to try and do that. And what mm. we need to be really aware so we're listening, we're in time with God and on time. And really, honestly, it's the simple things, keeping our hearts pure, staying in that submitted place, not giving any uh, attention or voice to the enemy or room for that, but just say, saying so totally focused um, yeah. and, and living in his sovereignty. So, yes, great. Very exciting, this, this reset, personal, corporate, you name it. There. Yeah. Oh, so good, Louise, and so many people in the comments saying, yes, preach it, preach it, Louise. But yeah. yes, so interesting. And I think talking about navigating this year in the timing of God, you know, I, I'm mindful of the, the prophetic word that the British Isles Council's put out. And, and some of the key things mm -hmm. that have stood out to me from that is, you know, last year was a year of disruption of activity. This year is a disruption of structure. Mm -hmm. And yet, it's sort of counterintuitively this year is also a year of building so you've got this deconstruction on one hand of structures the old structures are being taken down but but it's a building year and so in a very practical sense i've been in situations um within one of my other roles where i'm looking to build i'm like god okay i can see that you're rearranging this structure the old structure is being challenged and questioned but i can't quite see the new yeah, and yet it's a building year. So there's a sense of me going, I want to go forward. I want to build. And really what I've come back to is Psalm 127, unless the Lord builds the house, the laborers mm. build in vain. Yes. And I suddenly saw, oh, it is a building year, but it's God who is doing the building. And, mm. you know, it talks in Acts about how the church was built through the fear of the Lord by the Holy Spirit. And there's a sense in which there's such a sacred, holy way in which god is is building that it's and i keep thinking of that story where the, the man reached out and touched the ark to steady the ark he thought oh maybe this isn't you know it's going to fall over yes. and, and it's that we dare not reach out to steady the ark and try and do things in our own strength and so mm. part of what i'm seeing particularly with the timing is is not getting ahead mm. of where god is in our eagerness to sort of build or to say, well, that structure's not working from the past. I know I'll come up with this structure and go forward. And the sense that I see it, and actually someone in our, our church prophesied it last year, and I thought it was very profound. She prophesied that she saw like a mist. We were in a mist. This year was a, was a mist. And, um, it, but we were going forward, stepping stone by stepping stone. And it's that mm. sense of staying in God's shadow. You're not a million miles ahead. You can't necessarily see the end from the beginning, but you're staying close to him. You're taking each step as he reveals it. And part of that, I think, is an understanding that as I was praying about these structures and this building, and I was saying to God, I can't see. I can't see the way forward. I can see this thing isn't working, mm -hmm. but I can't see the new yet. And then I just saw these tents, almost like they came down from heaven, just ordinary camping tents. And I started to understand that sometimes the blueprint of heaven is a temporary structure. Sometimes mm. it's it's very flexible. It's very mobile. It's something that is for such a time as this. It's not a strongly built building, you know, with deep foundations, but it's a flexible mm. temporary structure. And so for me, I think that's just helpful to understand as we're looking to build with God, as we're looking to move forward in his time understand that if you don't see the end from the beginning right now he might be releasing a temporary structure to you something that is that you just go with for now until he unfolds the future mm. thing but yeah. let me just come back to you sarah jane on that 
Yeah, yeah, I think it's it's really good actually what you're saying because I think um, we don't want to rush ahead and build wrongly. We don't want to rush ahead and recreate something that was before. For for all of us in the the British Isles, we've been locked in for um, for nearly a year <laughs> at the end of March, which is crazy. We've had all of this, and actually part of us, part of the church, would want to say we can't wait to get back to. But God is very much saying from Isaiah forty three, "See, I'm doing a new thing." You've all heard it. Prophets have prophesied it. But actually, I think God's weight right now is on the previous scripture to that which is forget the former things you know forget it is you know in scripture god says always don't forget me don't forget what i've done but forget everything that went before because i'm doing a new thing and i'm renewing what i've put into your hands because it's a word of doing a new thing is it's a renewing it's not throw it away and start again it's it's a renew word and um, the other thing that i think adele is really important and louise i know you've we experienced this together in prayer on Friday, that sense of what time of day is it in, in, in the spirit? And God was saying on Friday very strongly and very clearly, it's twilight. And twilight is the part of the day, certainly in, in Hebrew culture and, and how God speaks um, from scripture, is that very short, not even an hour in Israel before the sun goes down. And this sense of the light is dim and there is confusion. And having done a bit of a study on it over the weekend, it's a time when sin is easily hidden because it's obscured. And so it's time to make sure that we bring our sins out into the light. It's time when uh, the, the new day is about to begin because, of course, new day in, in the Hebrew hour of day is when the sun goes down. And so I feel like God is giving us this window of opportunity in this twilight zone, if you will, of time that we are in to say, God, I don't see real clear. I'm seeing that the darkness is coming. And we go to Isaiah 60, 1 and 2 for that. The glory of the Lord is arising on us, but the darkness is over the people. Thick darkness is there, but the glory of the Lord is rising on us. We're in that time. We're coming into that time. But we're in this twilight zone where God is saying, walk with me really carefully because it's it's dim light and there's confusion. Yeah, very yeah. good. Yeah, Louise, please add to that. Yeah, I, I love what somebody put up there. Uh, yeah, Sharon Ann um, McKenzie said, Twilight, it's difficult to see. Mm. I think that's one of the things <clears throat> about Twilight. You're not actually sure what you're seeing. Um, it's It can be, as Sarah Jane said, confusing. And also you're not sure what is real and what is unreal. <clears throat> but it will, we all know in Twilight time, it will become clear because actually it's easier to see clearer either in the dark or mm. in the light, one or uh, one or the other. Yeah, I mean, uh, lots of the thoughts I have on, on, on what we're saying there. Um, one of the things about the mist, and if we're talking about I, um, somebody else is putting up there that uh, the mist and twilight, they almost seem to be similar things mm. because in the mist you can't see clearly either. Just yeah. like in twilight, you can't see um, uh, so clearly. And it just reminded me <clears throat> of being on a walk um, recently uh, around where we live here. And I looked down um, into the valley and there was a mist in the valley. And I saw what I thought was um, the steeple of one of the local churches up through the mist. And I thought to myself, I didn't, didn't think that there was a church so close to here. I, I was a little bit confused <laughs> because of the mist. Anyway, I continued my walk. And when I was on my way back, the mist cleared. And I realized what I was looking at was actually a pylon. And it was the top of the pylon that I could see. And the Lord spoke to me really clearly at that, at that time and said, a time is coming, and I believe actually that this is the time where that is here now, what he's establishing. He said, a time is coming when my churches will look like pylons, exactly what I'd seen. It was, I thought it was a church, but actually it was a pylon. And it's here, this thing. When I looked, this pylon in the spirit looked to me like I saw all the wires 
and I but I also saw dishes attached to it and it was like they were communication towers as mm. well as as um uh incredibly powerful you know high voltage and I realized what he was doing was saying I'm building something that is more powerful than you have ever experienced before mm. and the communication potential is far greater than you've ever known before and those two things about the the dish and the and the wires it is all about the power of electricity now I think for us personally I think anything over about 30 volts is considered to be dangerous but actually on those pylons they carry oh 400,000 volts <laughs> so it's like the time that we're coming into we need to understand it's a time of his power so mm. back to the other stuff we were saying that's why it's so important to be in his shadow if you want to carry yeah. his power if you want to carry his communication if you want to carry his authority you have got to be so submitted and back to what um sj was was originally saying you know this is not a time to be uh getting on and doing your own thing i mean this is so clearly not that mm. time the fear of the lord must be on yeah. us really understood what what is coming to be ready for those days to be gloriously relaxed into mm -hmm. him in the for for those days which i'm saying i'm declaring they are they are here we can sniff it they yeah. are, are <laughs> um, but, you know, I, we want to encourage you all that are online to be in that place somebody's just put in submit to transmit I like that. That's yeah, good. To, transmit, to transmit. Yeah. So there's just yeah. a, a few thoughts. I went off right. a bit of on I my hands there, but there you go. <laughs> so good. And and I think that um, I would absolutely agree that the sense I have too is that God wants to put so much power in and through the church. And that's a large part of what all of this slightly painful purifying and resetting and restructuring and all of this is unto. And, you know, I was looking at Ephesians uh, 3 the other day about the measure of the fullness. And I really believe that Jesus wants to release in us the measure of the fullness. I think where we've had experienced some of the drips, some of some of the some of the uh, experience of his love, of his anointing, there's a measure of fullness. I mean, I don't even know what that means, but it sounds glorious. The measure of fullness that he wants to release. Mm -hmm to us and it, and it is a sort of almost emptying out of the junk so the space for him to truly fill us with that measure but you know i i sense the same thing and and god was talking to me about you know he's coming to supercharge me uh and it was like i saw him uh, attaching electrical cables to my fingers and toes like he was going to put electricity <laughs> through me and it was like you know um i think was it elisha the prophet would lay on top of the boy that was dead mm. as overshadowed him and 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 the resurrection life the boy came back to life and there's something in this overshadowing and in, in that sense of jesus totally overshadowing us that is going to supercharge us into this place of the measure of the fullness mm. yeah. and look for more of your pearls we have four minutes left okay. <laughs> i just really feel I, what what you're all, what you're saying here ladies is really important and louise what you were saying there about the sovereignty of god even though we are in a time that is challenging when we can't really see and god is saying draw close to me god is making it easy for those of us that draw to him and say god i want to know what time it is i want to understand what time it is i actually want to be really close to you god's making it easy for us to do that and there's a sense of you know for those with the heart, for those with the hunger, there's an ease and a slipping, if you will, into the place where the, the past is forgotten and all you can see is God. All you can see is Jesus. All you can see is his face. And yeah. so, you know, all the rest is strangely dim. But as we search for him, and I would encourage us to be those who contemplate the Godhead, to contemplate Jesus, to contemplate God himself, not necessarily to just contemplate his ways, which is good, and to contemplate scripture, which is essential, um, but actually to move past all of that. 
Oh, we've lost Sarah Jane to move past that into beholding the face of Jesus himself was I'm pretty sure where she was going with that. Oh, she'll, she'll be back. Oh, here she is. You just Sorry, I don't know what happened there. It, it was the power. But I think what's, what's interesting is we are in challenging days, but there is an ease and there is encounter and connection with God like we've never had the invitation to have before there is an invitation to get right in there right on the edge of where god is speaking right in his mouth so to speak so that you can hear right in the moment of what god is doing not that we're looking at him from a distance and going oh god i want to hear what you're saying let me try and catch it somewhere no we're in god the more we position ourselves and push ourselves forward that should be i believe our focus right now yeah. yes in the word absolutely 100 percent, but right into god beyond our questions of can you fix this god what about this what about the other if we move into that place beyond things that are bothering our minds we get the clarity we get the empowerment from the spirit of god and we get that peace that we're talking about that peace that surpasses all understanding and the stillness in god that when we come back out to face the issues that we're all facing right now we're empowered to do that the other thing then the last thing i just want to say is is good news twilight is the door to the new day Mm -hmm. twilight is the door to the new day that should make us all happy we have to go through <laughs> twilight when we can't see and yes we start in darkness but it's a new day folks and we're alive and this is the time when god is doing amazing things so let's remember that and let's be joyful in that he's leading us forth in joy but we go carefully and we go in his timing so good sj yeah. like agree more you know colossians 3 set your mind on things above set your heart on christ absolutely yeah. the word of the season just get in his face and adore him he is restoring the joy of our salvation he is capturing us up into first love it's the most glorious yeah. delightful resetting of our hearts and minds that we could wish for pulling us away from our conformity to our world and our culture and transforming us as we gaze on him so we leave you i'm going to come to you louise for the joy bomb ending that you are because if that woman does not carry hope and joy i don't know who does um, but just as we leave right. you some questions to go away with go and ask god what time is it go and ask him in the areas where you can't see where you feel like the mist or the twilight is around you ask what are you teaching me in this yeah. and so you can understand what mm -hmm. he's Doing and partner with him ask him how are you overshadowing me and most of all just go and seek his face and love on him it's been such a pleasure to be with you this morning thank you for all your comments uh louise would you just pray us out with yeah. joy thank you so much yeah we'll go out with joy and be led forth in peace how's that what a great way to start the week oh my goodness Plus, the sun is shining here. Just have to point that out. <laughs> the sun is shining. The sun has got his hat on. Very good. Uh, Jesus, we adore you and we put you in first place. We seek first your kingdom, Lord God, and we trust you for all that you are adding on. And Lord, we say that we thank you for the season and the time that we're in right now and that you've called us for such a time as this. And in this twilight season, Lord, we say thank you that twilight is the door to the new day. Mm -hmm. And we just declare that over all of you, that the twilight that you're all in, it's mm -hmm. the door to the new day. And Lord, mm -hmm. we ask, we ask for grace and we ask, Lord, for your help and your sustaining mm -hmm. power and the fullness of you today more than we had yesterday in order to even endure a little bit more of this twilight until the new day comes forth. Mm -hmm. But Lord, we welcome it. We say yes and amen. And Lord, we just thank you for your sovereignty. And right now, as a group together, globally even, Lord, we say we come under the shadow of your glorious, protected, comforting wings. And we bless you and we glorify you for your incredible ways and your times and your seasons. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Goodbye. Have a great Bye. day. <laughs>